I've recently written an article about the Intersection Observer API in JavaScript and I want to show you the easiest way uh, that you can use to uh, lazy load images in your apps. Very briefly, lazy loading is sort of a delaying the loading of images until they become visible on the screen. We need this technique to improve the performance of the page because images are blocking the page load. With lazy loading, this is not the case. This website uses the lazy loading of images to show you what it looks like uh, in real world apps. I'm going to open the dev tools um, on my blog, which uses the lazy loading for post images on this one. And uh, I'm going to go to a network tab and set throttling to, let's say, let's set regular 2G. Shrink it a little bit. And uh, see what's going to happen when I refresh uh, the page. Clicking and you see the minified version of the image first and then after some time they will be replaced with the big version of the image. That's pretty much what I wanted to show but that's not the lazy loading. The lazy loading is going to happen when I scroll down because all we see is two images right now, but if I scroll down, you see the minified version first. And then after some time, we see the loading of the big image, which happens literally on the fly. This is done by a package that I've created a, a while ago that implements the Intersection Observer API but I want to show you um, how you can implement it in your projects because it's pretty easy to do. I'm sure once you know how the Intersection Observer works you'll start using it for all kinds of use cases. I have six images empty index HTML and index JS files. I'm gonna include all the, I'm going to create HTML first and I'm going to include uh, those six images like this and I want to give uh, the each image uh, its real dimensions and you will see later why uh, we need to add dimensions for every image like width and uh, height. Yeah, I'll take a look at the real dimensions for each image to know it because I don't know it and I will include behind the scenes. Okay, so I've added width and height for each image. Also a little bit of styles to make things nicer. It just makes so that uh, the section is a grid with three columns. So that we have three images and three images. Each image is 100% width and height. A little bit of rounded and object fit. So let's take a look what it looks like in the browser. Um, I have a live server, a live server VS Code plugin that allows us to just launch it right here, go live, and uh, we have this project opened on port fifty five zero zero. This is exactly what I wanted: six images, two rows, rounded corners. The only problem that I see here, let's add a bunch of lorem ipsum text right here so that they, these six images get pushed down so that we don't see them on the screen when the initial page loading happens. Go back to our VS Code, create a P element with lorem 1300, hit tab, save, and let's see it in the browser. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted. And if I scroll down, I can see them. Let's add the lazy loading so that when I refresh the page, images are not going to be loaded like right now. If I go to network tab and select images, refresh the page, you can see that even though we don't see any images right now, we still get six images loaded, which takes time and they have a like pretty big size, like at least this one. To make lazy loading work, we first need to get rid of this SRC attribute on the images. I'm gonna just replace it with, uh, we re rename it to something else like data SRC. 
And then with JavaScript, I will remove the data SRC when I need it. So let's include, uh, oh, what the hell is this? Script SRC tab index.js. Great. Awesome. So console.log. Nice. Open the cons log. So yeah, everything works. First thing that I'm going to do is to select all the images that I have. Const images equals document query selector all uh, section mg. The second thing is the actual intersection observer. Intersection observer allows us to react to um, certain events intersection between viewport of the browser and the HTML element. In our case, images will be intersected with the viewport of the browser and we're gonna catch that and react to this event. If it sounds complicated, just bear with me. It's pretty straightforward. It's as easy as reacting to some click event. So I'm just going to create a new instance of observer equals new intersection observer. And it takes a callback. I'll name this callback um, observer handler function observer handler. And uh, it takes two parameters, entries and observer. We'll talk about them later. When this callback is triggered, we will loop through each entry and check if uh, the intersection ratio of single entry is greater than zero. We're gonna just print console.log. Obviously, it's not gonna work yet because we still need to call the observe method and put target element but we have a lot of elements so we need to use uh, images for each emg and let's call the observe method on single image like this let's preview it in the browser let's refresh the browser okay we see it just the favicon uh, missing and we scroll down and we see nice hit three times because we uh, see three images. Instead of printing nice to the console, let's change the image data src to src as soon as image is intersected with the viewport of the user's browser. We can do it like this. Entry target uh, src equals entry target data set src. Let's just save and go to the browser, refresh the page, scroll down, and all the images are visible, ready, and loaded. There you go. This is basically the lazy loading. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, without any libraries, with small amount of code. In case you don't know what the dataset is, the dataset is basically the same thing as getting attribute from the element. Get attribute data src it would have been the same so these two lines are basically identical we can test it in the browser let's refresh the page scroll down and you see elements still appear there are also options that we can pass in observer one of these options is threshold by default it's zero which means as soon as one pixel of the element is visible we will execute uh, the callback right here but if we change it to one, it means that as soon as 100% of the element is visible, then run the callback. And I will show you in the browser uh, what it looks like. Let's set it to one, go to the browser, refresh the page, scroll down. And you can see, even though we see the element image is not loaded because we don't see 100% of it. We see at least like 70% but not 100 and when I scroll more the image is loaded because now we see the the whole element the threshold is decimal so if you want to set 50% of the element you'll need to set it to 0.5 like this 
or you can do it with zero like this. Those are the same things in JavaScript. When you have a decimal number that starts with zero, you can just skip it and remove it. The same applies for CSS. I just prefer 0.5. It's just, it just looks nicer. Okay, let's see it in the browser. Refresh the page, scroll down. Up oh, 100% and it appears like this. This is basically what the threshold is. There are more options that you can pass to the observer. In my article, I have a um, chapter observer options and you can read about the rest two of the options that you can pass. I already told you about the smooth loader package that I've created a while ago. It basically implements the intersection observer API and it allows you to lazy load images with placeholders and smooth CSS transitions. There are already tons of packages on lazy loading on NPM. You can just search them. And there are packages for Vue, for React, for Angular. You can use one of these. You don't need to reinvent the wheel uh, to use lazy loading on your website. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the intersection observer is and how you can use it. Uh, by the way, we can use the observer helper here, but it's not required, it's optional. I personally don't see a use cases for that a helper. So I, I just use entries. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.